folks, football is back, and Bet Online remains your number one source for all your football betting needs this season. You'll find the latest odds, matchup info, player news, and game trends. As your continued source for all sports wagering info, Bet Online features live betting, free contests, live scores, and giveaways all season long. Always the fastest and easiest way to bet all your favorite sports and events like MLB, MMA, tennis, boxing, and even golf. Head to betonline.ag, that's B-E-T-O-L-I-N-E.ag, to receive your 100% welcome bonus with your first deposit. Make sure you use the promo code BELIEVE, that's B-L-E-A-V, to receive your rewards. Bet online where the game starts, and also Bet Online sponsors the Boss Man Show on your radio. All right, folks, back on the Boss Man Show, front of the show, Scott Adams from Fieldhouse Files, a great site to follow your Pacers. Scott, what's up, man? Good to talk to you again, brother. Yes, good to be on with you back in our lives, right? No doubt. Yeah, let me get my mic. That's stupid. Can you hear that, Scott? Yeah, but my stuff just switched over. Hold on. Okay. Are you sound? Did you sound better now? Is that what it was? Yeah, I sound better now because I was muted because my, my my mic went stupid on me. Okay. All right. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, Let's nah, start you're over. Good, brother, you're good, man. Hey, technology was Zoom, man. It's all good. So, Scott, I saw you posted year eleven for you covering the Pacers. Same for me, Atlanta Hawks, brother. Well, I started 2012, 13 season. This is my eleven years as well. So we both doing this eleven years. Exactly. Hey, you believe it's been eleven years for you, man? Not really. It's funny to to consider the different iterations. It's nice to be in full training camp mode, whereas last year we were in mass. The year before that, we were. It's all remote, um, and all, and all that different kind of thing. And and so now it'll be interesting to see. Then now moving forward, how the league is covered once again. We'll get back into the locker rooms. Pacers first two preseason games on the road, so I won't experience that again until next week when they're home for a couple preseason games. But I think that's very important for us. But even more so for the fans and so it's nice to get back to a little bit of a feeling of regularity and even more so man to have that regular schedule back because didn't we just it felt like we just jammed like four seasons into three years yes yes indeed man and like you said man uh getting to know, know the guys in the locker rooms was good for good for you and i you and i both for our jobs man because you know the guys the coach know who you are like it took a while for nate to realize who i was you know what i'll say after it was so on Zoom so much, like, oh, Jay, I'm gonna see right. you. <laughs> like, like, you know, it's like it's crazy, man. But seeing getting back, getting back at the gym, seeing players and coaches again, man, so much fun, man. And for you, man, I feel like you guys are where the Hawks were a few years ago, where it's player development, young guys. So, how does it feel to see these young guys get better, compete with Rick Carlisle, Lori Pierce, all these guys, so to coach these guys up, so they're all part of go, help these young guys become better players, help you guys down the road to compete in the East once again. So the East is very deep, as we talked about off the air. Yeah, absolutely. The Pacers are definitely in rebuilding mode for the and, and to go back to my 11 years here. This is the first time they've admitted it. This is the first time they've really gone in a full rebuild mode in over 30 years. They're coming off their highest draft pick since the mid 1980s. So, so much of this for Indianapolis and for the Pacers is, is a brand new feel. And so they're going into this season with no expectations in terms of wins. And to your point, just wanting to see player development. Rick Carlisle's talked a lot about the eye test. And you'll know it, he says, if a player or if the team is getting better, if they're doing the right type of thing. The other thing here in training camps is they focused almost entirely on defense. Um, knowing that offense will come, guys know how to score if they need to, a lot of free flow. And so they wanted to refocus on the defense and more than anything, just get build some team chemistry because this roster has turned over a couple times in the last few years. And Scott, as you know, I've noticed Scott getting young guys to defend and commit to the end of the floor, the hardest thing ever. So having a whole camp on defense will, I feel like will help because if you can defend, you <laughs> maybe have a chance every night. Cause you know, you're not both know that defense wins games. A lot of times you, you might have an off night, but if you can defend coastal points, get rebounds and guns on transition. Can win some games, steals a game here or there. And for those guys developing, that's very important. Yeah, no question. And a lot of these guys haven't been in the league two years. So they just have to learn how to be a pro, how to handle themselves, how to get pra extra practice time in. How do you break down film? Like, I'm getting very elementary, but so are they. And that's the stage that they are at for the majority of the roster. No doubt, man. And for you, 
this offseason, who do you think had the best summer in your mind on the roster right now? And who's showing the, out the most in camp as you see it thus far? Yeah, it's a guy probably your entire audience has never heard of. A guy, Terry Taylor, undrafted. Austin Peay, I know him very well. TSU, Austin Peay, OVC rivals. <laughs> Absolutely. That's why I said your audience. I didn't say you necessarily. <laughs> But he, he's been really impressive, just dominated, showed that he didn't even belong in a, in a good way at Summer League, uh, just kind of had his way. Then they said, all right, dude, you're good. Like, you don't need to play the final couple of games here. But he is quietly really impressed uh, in, in practices, according to the players. Um, so that's one guy that stands out. Um, and then what I'm most curious to see here is what are things like with Miles Turner? Because he hadn't played since January, both with his health, and in that time, they added the new face of the franchise and Tyrese Halliburton and traded away the other center and Devonna Sabonis. For the first time in like five seasons, Miles is the sole starting center. Although it's kind of interesting because then they re-signed Jalen Smith and in doing so promised him the starting four role. So there are a little bit of the twin towers, if you will, will in the front court, but there's no doubt that Miles is the center. And so I'll be curious the way in which they utilize him um, on the offensive end and how much of a boost he provides out that defensive end like we're used to. And is Batate still there, uh, Gigi? Is he, is he still there or is he injured? Yeah, yeah, Goga's still there, but he doesn't really have much of a role here. Um, I'm kind of surprised the team hadn't parted ways and tried to find a – trying to move him off in a trade package because I think he deserves a fresh start. And the team, they're log jamming in, in the front court. I mentioned those two uh, two previous guys in Miles and in Jalen Smith. How about Isaiah Jackson? He's the guy to keep an eye out for here in the next couple of years who could really take off, I think, even more so if they ultimately or when they ultimately do a deal moving on for Miles, I think. And, Scott, speaking of that, do you think they're going to maybe go maybe half the year, see how it goes? I know Mr. Simon does not want to get rid of Miles and Buddy here right away, but at what point did you just say, hey, let's use our cap space, about $29 million in cap space, let's kick a first-round pick back for somebody. You know, just, just help us down the road get an asset or two with those contracts of Buddy and Miles that you guys have on, on, on the books right now. Yeah, Pacers have the most cap space in the league because they needed it to – technically signed DeAndre Ayton to that offer sheet, which then was quickly matched by the Phoenix Suns. But that signals, I think, a little bit to Miles. Like, hey, it's like we're still dating, but I'm also dating over here, at least trying. I'm still over here swiping right on others. So we're not really dating. Like, it's a little bit of an awkward dance, I feel like. But um, I don't think there's a specific time frame. Um, but I think you can expect for Miles and Buddy to be moved elsewhere just because for Miles, he's in a contract year wants to feel free agency, being a free agent for the first time next summer. And for Buddy, he would be great on this roster, both in leadership, durability, and shooting. Rick Carlisle can't have enough shooters out there. However, his timeline would be more fitting for a team that's pushing for a, a championship here. That's definitely not the Pacers, not this year, not next year. So they would be better off getting at least a first-round pick for each of them. Now, Scott, you mentioned Miles, I mean, Aiden's contract. Yep. I feel like it was too basic. It was easy for yep. Sarver to match it. I feel like if you – I know Mr. Simon hates to get, get over on, on his colleagues, but I was like, hey, if you put in a trade kicker, make him pay some money up front, you know, <laughs> make it three years with an option, he may want to balk the matching that offer. And, I, and, you know, I feel like Aiden – we saw his his comments at, at media day, training camp first day. He Yikes, really right? He's not going to be in, in Phoenix. He'd love to be a pacer if he could be. So I was like – I know he didn't want to get, get over on his colleague, but if he put more in that office sheet, he may could be a pacer right now. Yeah, I think that was the one main criticism of that deal was that, yes, the Pacers went in and did something they just do not really do. The only other time they've done it, they knew the Knicks could not match to that level, and it was with a low-level contract with Chris Copeland, like 2.4. If I remember right, the Knicks couldn't offer more than like 2.1. So they knew if they offered it, they could get it. They did not know that with Aiton. The front office thought it was more than likely than not they wouldn't, but thought it was absolutely worth the swing at the plate. Then Phoenix, I think they're, from their side of it, they were able to get DeAndre Ayton a little cheaper and one less year. But I think that also means inevitably he'll be on the trading block because like we've seen what that relationship is like. He hadn't talked to his head coach since the last game, supposedly, if we take him at his word. He's clearly not enjoying the atmosphere. Um 
is trying to make the best of the situation you hope here, but that signals to me, Aiden's open for business. And so the Suns have to be because they can't lose a guy like him for nothing um, down the road here, but that's several years. And Scott, I could see Jay Crowder been a pacer option. This is a salary dump. You know, two second round picks for him. You know, to you use the cap space that you guys have to get you to, to the floor. Or the guys get a nice bonus at the end of the year, which the guys probably want that bonus. But I was sudden open my spot. You guys have thinking maybe, maybe trade eight, trade Crowder there and mm-hmm. get some picks off of it. Yeah, that could be something you could consider. The one thing I always like to point that out, though, is yes, while the Pacers are under the salary floor completely right now, there's also no rush. They have until the end of next June. So you could do a deal similar to this next June, maybe, when another team wants to get off a random contract. There's no way I, they will be under that floor. Teams just generally do not do that. I do think OKC did it, I want to say, this past year. But there's there's too many creative ways that front offices can work to take on a contract like that, get compensated, and for the same amount of money you'd be doling out anyway. But this gives them optionality is the word Kevin Pritchard, the team president, likes to use. And, Scott, uh, we've been talking about these guys, Tyrese and Matherin. Tell me about Absolutely. those two guys, man, and that, the future of those two young men and Duarte, too. I saw you posted a video with Duarte working out with General Parko today. So talk about those guys as well, man. Yeah, all very bright, especially the first two. Actually, really, I'll throw Duarte in there. I just see guys that love the game. Like, they're in there for practice, and then they'll be posting at night, like, I'm back at the gym. Um, they don't want to miss time. They don't, uh, they don't want to lose. And those are all characteristics that the Pacers targeted, that they want guys that just love the game um, and put everything into it, less about branding and all that, which we've seen in the past with several guys, and it's inevitable for many guys. But especially let me focus on Tyrese Halliburton because he admittedly is the face of the team by the front office. He accepts it. He's only going into year three, by the way. So he has things he hadn't experienced as an NBA player, the main one being he hasn't played in even a playoff game just yet. And that's why the Pacers and uh, that roster need veterans. They need guys like that to be able to lean on, whether it's a Buddy Heel and Miles Turner. They brought in Langston Galloway and James Johnson on non-guaranteed camp contracts. We'll see if either one of those or both are able to stick to start the season, for example. But um, Halliburton's the man. Yes, he does not have a, a great looking shot. But guess what? Neither did Reggie Miller. And he's a Hall of Famer and probably the third or fourth best shooter of all time in the league. So you don't get caught up in in the how as long as it goes in with the result there is something. Um, but Tyrese Halberton, he he's, he's the full package from what you're able to see with him on the court, off the court, in the locker room, in this community. He's really embracing them as much as indie fans seem to be embracing him. No doubt, man. I love coming to Indianapolis, man. Uh, say that that the JW up there, right off mm-hmm. of Mass Mass Half, when I go up there to the stadium, man. So it's always cool to come up there, man. Let me ask you about my guy, little LP Lloyd Pierce. How's it been getting to know LP and having him as a social health head coach, Rick Carlisle, and what's he meant to those young players up there in Indiana, man? Yeah, so he's unofficially basically the associate head coach. Like when Rick missed a few games last year, um, he took over. Obviously, he has that head coaching experience from his time being in Atlanta. And I wouldn't be surprised if he's a head coach again in another couple years, quite honestly, getting another shot at it. Um, He's proven to be a good coach and, and handles the locker room and those sorts of things. He's less so involved in player development, I, I think, than all the other assistant coaches. He doesn't um, he doesn't do this advanced scouting like the other coaches because he's treated basically like another head coach out there. And so he's bringing ideas to Rick. He's listening and taking in the scout from the other assistant coaches. But then he's, he's very much acting like a head coach in many ways. Um, Rick's obviously the final decision maker and such. But he does work one-on-one with Miles Turner. That's the one guy he does still work with, uh, kind of the veteran. And, and both of those guys kind of very – um, level-headed, uh, they got a good head on their shoulders, and I, I really like LP. We don't get to see we have this is the least amount of training camp practice because it's zero that I've ever watched in my eleven years. Now I'm excluding the COVID year, but you can't. So therefore, I can't really describe what he or the other assistants are doing out there. Unfortunately, we're only uh, let in when it's time for free throws and shooting. But no doubt, he has an active part in this team every single day. I miss him a lot. I love Nate, but I miss LP too. Mm-hmm. LP's close. He's to a character. Age. 
Yep. <laughs> and Absolutely. we're both fans of the Raiders, too, which is not yes. basically Oh, he'll let you know about that. <laughs> yeah, 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 which probably not a good thing right now, but we are Ra- 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 Raider fans. Last one for you, mm-hmm. Scott. You have a great story about Nate McMillan, because I know a lot of people here are getting, trying to get to know him better. So yeah. do you have any fun moments you want to share with us about Nate McMillan that we should know about here, here, in, here in Atlanta that we can kind of learn more about <laughs> our head coach here? I don't know. I got many stories just because he was here for so long um, as assistant coach and then head coach. Um, one of the one of the small things, not even basketball related, was just kind of how he was behind the times a little bit. Um, and that was something he had to adapt, let's say, as being a new head coach uh, again. Um, before he was obviously known in his previous time uh, with Portland as Sarge, you know, be laying down the hammer, it's my way or the highway, those sort of things. No cell phones on the bus, et cetera. Well, uh, oftentimes I was talking with his son, Jamel uh, McMillan, who's now as an assistant coach, obviously, but, and this probably was five, seven years ago, but Nate had just gotten into texting and he was using emojis now. And so that was a big accomplishment for Nate was not only was he texting, but he was using emojis now. So he has come along from a guy that would like ban cell phones on the team bus to a guy that could reply briefly with just emoji. No doubt. I love Coach Millen. He's a great guy. Uh, I look forward to hope he's here a long time. I hope he is, Scott. So, uh, man, thank you for your time, buddy. Scott, it was fun to talk to you. Hope to see you this year in Indiana when I come up there with the Hawks, man. Uh, hope to ha- hope we can have a great year, man. You all win some games. We win some games. Hopefully, we- it'll be good for all of us, for all of us, brother. <laughs> all right. Sounds good. Thanks for having me on, man. I see you, brother. Folks, football is back, and Bet Online remains your number one source for all your football betting needs this season. You'll find the latest odds, matchup info, player news, and game trends. As your continued source for all sports wagering info, Bet Online features live betting, free contests, live scores, and giveaways all season long. Always the fastest and easiest way to bet all your favorite sports and events like MLB. MMA, tennis, boxing, and even golf. Head to betonline.ag, that's B-E-T-O-L-I-N-E.ag to receive your 100% welcome bonus with your first deposit. Make sure you use the promo code BELIEVE, that's B-L-E-A-V, to receive your rewards. Bet online where the game starts, and also BetOnline sponsors the Boss Man Show on your radio. 